Our first story says unpatchable vulnerability in Apple chip leaks secret encryption keys. I'm going to go ahead and quote the article here, so bear with me. The flaw, a side channel allowing end-to-end key extractions when Apple chips run implementations of widely used cryptographic protocols, can't be patched directly because it stems from the micro-architectural design of the silicon itself. Instead, it can only be mitigated by building defenses into third-party cryptographic software that could drastically degrade M-series performance when executing cryptographic operations, particularly on earlier M1 and M2 chips. The vulnerability can be exploited when the target, targeted cryptographic operation and the malicious application with normal user system privileges run on the same CPU cluster. For the record, this is one of those articles that there are crap tons of technical details in the article. So if you are a researcher or just interested in that stuff, definitely check that out. I'm, I'm trying to condense the the SparkNotes version, as always. So just wanted to throw that out there. Security experts have long known that classical prefetchers open a side channel that malicious processes can probe to obtain secret key material from cryptographic operations. The breakthrough of the new research is that it exposes a previously overlooked behavior of DMPs in Apple Silicon. Sometimes they confuse memory content, such as key material, with the pointer value that is used to load other data. As a result, the DMP often reads the data and attempts to treat it as an address to perform memory access. The attack, which researchers have named GoFetch, one word, GoFetch, uses an application that doesn't require root access, only the same privileges needed by most third-party applications installed on a Mac system. The attack works against both classical encryption algorithms and a newer generation of encryption that has been hardened to withstand anticipated attacks from quantum computers. The GoFetch app requires less than an hour to extract a 2048-bit RSA key, Cough, cough, Microsoft, we just talked about. A little over two hours to extract a 2048-bit Diffie-Hellman key, and it takes 54 minutes to extract the material required to assemble a Kyber 512 key and 10 hours for a Dilithium 2 key, not counting offline time needed to process the data. And those last two are post-quantum protocols, I believe. I would be interested about that offline time needed, because I'll just leave it at that. The GoFetch app connects to the targeted app and feeds it input that it signs or decrypts. As it's doing so, it extracts the app secret key that it uses to perform these operations. The mechanism means the targeted app need not perform any cryptographic operations on its own during the collection period. Like other micro-architectural CPU side channels, the one that makes GoFetch possible can't be patched in the silicone. This means that in addition to constant time programming, developers will have to employ other defenses, almost all of which come with significant performance penalties. Readers should remember that whatever penalties result will only be felt when affected software is performing specific cryptographic operations. For browsers and many other types of apps, the performance costs may not be noticeable. End users who are concerned should check for GoFetch mitigation updates that become available for macOS software that implements any of the four encryption protocols known to be vulnerable. Out of an abundance of caution, it's probably also wise to assume, at least for now, that other cryptographic protocols are likely also susceptible. I think this is a little bit alarming because this is something that can be done remotely. However, this is something that also requires you to download an app. So I think if you are sticking to reputable apps, both open source and otherwise. I think that will drastically, drastically reduce your odds of being compromised by this. And of course, be sure to update and all that fun stuff. There's a lot of these side channel attacks. And fortunately, I feel like they're relatively, most of them are relatively hard to pull off. And also the damage that they can do is also somewhat limited typically. And it is very narrowed in on one specific thing. I mean, I feel like there, again, there are bigger fish to fry for most people. Not that this isn't a big deal, but for most people, I'd really be taking a look at more of the common basics because those are, this is something I'd be concerned about in a more targeted use case. This isn't something that I think will be implemented on a wide scale on hundreds or thousands of people, most likely. I also wonder personally when they say like performance penalties, because I remember they said that about like Spectre and Meltdown, like, oh, this is going to cause a hit to your CPU performance. Well, I'm not a professional gamer, so I didn't even notice. So I wonder if it'll be like that where, you know, yeah, most people probably won't notice the performance hit or if it will actually be like, no, it'll kind of take you back a generation or something. But that's just me wondering. I'm going to read through. It's the research article looks pretty insane, actually. They actually even talk about attacking post-quantum cryptography with this. There are a lot of symbols. I don't even know what they are in this. So... Yeah. I just want to point out a lot of people 
And I think they're not developers, which I'm not a developer, but I, I feel like a lot of people get harsh, especially on bigger companies who are proprietary and employ lots of employees. And they're like, oh, they have so many employees. How did they not notice this? Like, this has to be a malicious backdoor. But when you're dealing with big code, and I'm, I'm not defending bloated code. There's definitely a such thing as bloated code. But even when you're not bloated, when you're dealing with big code, there's so much room for unforeseen impact and unforeseen uh, consequences. That's word. Just keep that in mind. Not, not. I'm not just talking about this story because you know I'm not trying to chill Apple, but it, just across the board. Like that's why you mentioned there's so many side channel attacks because you never know when you're going to roll one thing out and oh that just broke ten other things. It it happens sometimes. And if you think it doesn't, then clearly you've never done anything technical. Just to add on to that, a couple things. I think that if you are critical of this, you should just read the primary source yourself. Because if you look through this, you'll see just how insane this is and how this is not just a run-of-the-mill thing that was like neglected. This is a pretty serious thing, and it's it's insanely complicated, and I am struggling to keep up with it. The second thing, too, is I'm just going to quote a little something here. I'm at the very end. This is the conclusion, actually, from the actual paper, the actual researchers. They showed that DMPs pose a significant security threat to modern software, breaking a wide variety of state-of-the-art cryptographic implementations. At a high level, if the attacker has the ability to secret-dependently write a pointer to memory, the DMP enables it to learn partial or complete information about that secret. While we demonstrate end-to-end -end attacks on four cryptographic implementations, more programs are likely at risk given similar attack strategies. Given our findings that DMPs also exist on the Apple M2 slash M3 and Intel 13th generation CPUs, the problem seemingly transcends specific processors and hardware vendors and thus requires dedicated hardware countermeasures. So not even the researchers are targeting Apple. They just used Apple chips to do this research. They even directly cite the Intel 13th generation CPUs, which I don't believe were actually utilized in the study. But given the presence of the same technologies in the other CPUs on the market, they're even saying this likely transcends specific processors and hardware vendors. I forgot about that part. I didn't see that actually mentioned in many uh, news articles. I had to go to the primary source for that. It's a bigger headline to just make it about Apple. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. Here's another clip for you. And if you want to really dive into tech news, check out our main channel surveillance report for all your privacy and security news in a convenient video and audio podcast once a week. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.